Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Government agencies keep telling us that Arctic ice is disappearing and it's at the lowest level since satellite records began in 1979. They draw a nice straight line through their graphs and show that Arctic sea ice is going to disappear before very long. And of course the graphs start in 1979 because they say that's the start of the satellite record. It's a great story except that it isn't true. The 1990 United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report said something completely different. They said, satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. The American Navy Joint Ice Center has produced weekly charts which have been digitized by NOAA. In 1972 to 1975, sea ice extent was significantly less, and you can see that in their graph. Sea ice extent was much lower during the early 1970s than it was in 1979. They're trying to make a story that sea ice is disappearing, and by hiding the data before 1979, they make their story sound much more credible. In this chart, I combine the current sea ice graph with the one from the 1990 IPCC report. The 1990 IPCC report graph is shown in blue. You can see that their straight line is no longer valid and that sea ice extent in 1974 wasn't a whole lot higher than it was this year. And actually satellites have been used to map Arctic ice conditions since 1966. This shouldn't surprise anyone because we went to the moon three years later in 1969. So these claims that the satellite record began in 1979, which were made by the United Nations and by the U.S. government, are not true. If we go back a little bit further and look at the predecessor report to the IPCC from 1985, the Department of Energy report, we again see something completely different. We know that Arctic sea ice extent was low in 1974 and was even lower during the 1950s. In 1958, a United States submarine surfaced at an ice-free North Pole. And the New York Times reported, some scientists estimate that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was a half century ago, and that even within the lifetime of our children, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships to sail over the North Pole. The next paragraph was very enlightening. Although the idea that a solid ice sheet covers the central Arctic has lingered stubbornly in the popular fancy, the northern cap of ice worn by our planet is actually a thin crust, on the whole only about 7 feet thick. So in 1958, people shared the same misconceptions about the Arctic, which the U.S. government is trying to impress on people now. The ice in the central Arctic in 1958 was about 2 meters thick. Let's take a look at what it is now. As of October 5, 2021, the ice in the Central Arctic is about 2 to 3 meters thick. So Arctic ice thickness now is about the same as it was in 1958. Fifty years ago, National Geographic published this map of Arctic sea ice extent. And this is a map of the extent today from the Danish Meteorological Institute. I'm going to flash back and forth between 2021 in 1971 a few times. You can see that the extent in 2021 is not terribly different than it was 50 years ago. So the extent of Arctic sea ice is similar to what it was in 1971 and the thickness is about the same as it was in 1958. So let's take a look at why Arctic sea ice extent was so high in 1979. The eastern Arctic cooled dramatically from 1940 until 1979. 1979 was the coldest year on record in the capital of Iceland. Sea ice extent in 1979 was near the highest point of the past century. And government agencies ignore all the data before that because it doesn't suit their agenda. In 2008, Norway's leading expert predicted the Arctic would be ice-free that summer. Canada's leading expert in National Geographic predicted the North Pole would be ice-free in 2008. Based on the expert forecast, British swimmer Lewis Pugh attempted to kayak to the North Pole. He was trying to kayak 1,200 kilometers, but he only made it about 20 kilometers out of Svalbard before he was blocked by ice. Lewis Pugh did what they always tell us we're supposed to do. He listened to the scientists. But NASA's leading Arctic expert, Jay Zwally, was a little bit more conservative. He predicted the Arctic wouldn't be ice-free until 2012. 
And Mark Ceres at the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado, said the Arctic is screaming. National Geographic also predicted the Arctic would be ice-free by 2012. But the BBC was more conservative. They said the Arctic wouldn't be ice-free until 2013, and they said, in the end, it will just melt away quite suddenly. They did, however, say that their projection of 2013 might be too conservative, and the Arctic might become ice-free before then. The Sierra Club definitively predicted the ice would vanish in 2013. But Nobel laureate Al Gore was a little bit more measured in his response. He said the ice wouldn't be gone until 2014. The U.S. Navy also said that the ice wouldn't be gone until 2014. NASA's James Hansen, who started the global warming scare before Congress in 1988, said the Arctic wouldn't be ice-free until sometime between 2013 and 2018. And Democrats in Congress said he was right and called him a climate prophet. Cambridge University and some other leading journalists predicted the Arctic wouldn't be ice-free until 2015. And President Obama's science advisor predicted the Arctic would not only be ice-free in summer, but would also be ice-free during the winter. Most of these predictions were made between 2007 and 2009, and since then there's been no trend in Arctic sea ice extent. The Arctic minimum this summer was the highest in seven years and was up almost 30% from last year. Yet climate scientists in the U.S. government keep insisting that July was the hottest month ever in the history of the planet. I'm pretty sure that ice doesn't grow during record heat. Ice doesn't lie, but government climate scientists do. Now let's look at the other poll. In 1984, NASA's James Hansen predicted that Antarctica would be the fastest warming place on Earth. It would warm between 5 and 8 degrees Celsius with a doubling of CO2. He also predicted peak sea ice loss around Antarctica. But since then, Arctic sea ice extent has been increasing. And the South Pole just had their coldest winter on record. Government scientists make prophecies about the climate future when they don't understand the basic mechanisms of what drives the climate. And when the climate doesn't behave as they predicted, they simply hide the data from the past to cover up their incompetence. These people aren't doing science. They're committing fraud with the purpose of pushing a political agenda. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on these scams for the past 13 years. You can visit him, Curier, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.